Hey guys, welcome back. This is FSX404. Uh, this is the GPS navigation part four using the glass cockpit. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in onto our uh, MFD on the G1000. By the way, this is the Quest Kodiak uh, airplane. Uh, it is payware, and uh, the G1000 in this uh, in this airplane is a little more detailed than it is in the default planes for the uh, FSX. Uh, first thing you can do over here is you can play with the range on your map. So if we zoom it out, we can actually see our flight path um, all the way to Catalina. You can see we're going to fly to Driffy, we're going to fly to Holtz, and then we're going to fly to Catalina. Let's zoom it in a little bit. Uh, by the way, you can't, I don't think you can zoom this in in uh, standard FSX uh, G1000 cockpit, glass cockpit. Second thing is, let's go back to the, uh, the uh, PFD. There's uh, quite a few different important things that Quest Kodiak airplane has that the uh, default planes don't have in uh, FSX. The major thing is this OBS button is is workable in uh, uh, Quest Kodiak. Why this is important is because if you see right here 29.7 to SXC uh, that's actually our NAV1 111.4 uh, this is the VOR to Catalina and our distance is 29.7 few other cool things about this uh, G1000 cockpit is, are that if you press bearing 1 it will automatically give you your second VOR. Our second NAV2 VOR is 115.7 in this case I've put in the CL Beach VOR. So it will automatically give us the distance to that VOR and it will give us the heading to that VOR so we can triangulate. This is something you can do in uh, in the FSX uh, Cessna 172 G1000. I really wish they would have put this in but uh, they didn't. Next thing is bearing 2 ADF. I don't have any ADF data so we don't really care about that. And the coolest thing about this one is that you can put in your wind. This right here when you're pressing the wind this gives you your wind at your current altitude. That way you can adjust your heading um, ahead of time usually what you want to do in the VOR uh, HSI and GPS navigations is uh, I told you you adjust for the wind well here's the wind in front of you so I wish FSX uh, default planes had this uh, in there but they don't so let's get rid of this uh, bearing because we're not, we're not gonna need it we're gonna do GPS navigation now let's go into the GPS navigation the first thing we're gonna do for the GPS navigation the glass cockpit is the same thing we do for the uh, VOR and HSI navigations. That means we're going to put the airplane in the GPS mode. The way you put the airplane in the GPS mode in the glass cockpit is there's the CDI button. If you press that button, it will automatically put you into a GPS mode. And the good part is, if you look at the needle, it's automatically matching your flight path. In the HSI and VOR nav GPS navigation, you have to turn in your own needle to the heading. But the glass cockpit in the GPS mode will automatically uh, give you those those headings so let's put it back in the VOR mode in the VOR mode you can turn your own needle uh, but once you put it in the GPS mode it's not gonna work so we're gonna put uh, the airplane in our GPS mode and we're gonna fly the needle the GPS navigation in a glass cockpit is way easier than the other two, the VOR and HSI. That's why I left this one for last. I wanted you guys to learn it the hard way first. That way everything else seems easy and you actually learn better. If, if you learn this first, you get into a bad habit of forgetting to put in your headings on your VOR and HSIs and it will confuse the heck out of you. That's why you should always learn the VORs and HSI uh, navigation in GPS mode first and then switch to a glass cockpit where everything is automatic for you. So what we're going to do right now, I'm going to do fly this a little bit just to show you a little bit how it works. Um, let's take off. Now I am a little bit unfamiliar with this airplane so just bear with me uh, with this Quest Kodiak but it should be sufficient for me to show you how this works and you can see immediately after takeoff how the needle is already starting to move because we're, uh, we are flying away from the flight path 
Now the needle in the GPS mode in the glass cockpit still gives you your distance from the flight path but as you can see in this airplane uh, the deflection is a lot greater than it is in the VOR or in a HSI. The good thing about actual G1000 cockpits is that you can go in there and you can adjust your own deflection from uh, 2 miles to 0.3 miles uh, which is very accurate. Unfortunately I haven't found an airplane um, in a G1000 or a glass cockpit airplane in a Microsoft Flight Simulator that, that has that much detail into its uh, G1000 which is a shame because there's a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff that was left out out of these uh, G1000 cockpits in Microsoft Flight Simulator that is a lot more useful than all that other crap that comes with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator that you never need, you're never going to use but you got to do the best you can with what you have so So let's turn on to the downwind right now and go back and intercept our uh, flight path to our first point, Driffy. Let me zoom it in. And as you can see, as we get closer to the flight path, the needle is starting to come in. Uh, let's start our turn to intercept the uh, the flight path. And for some reason, the uh, the airplane, this airplane, the Quest Kodiak in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it just doesn't want to stay in the turn. I keep having to put it back in, it wants to roll out. I don't know if this is uh, the case with an actual Quest Kodiak, but anyway, uh, all right, so we're on uh, 183 heading right now. We are lined up with a needle, and as we can see, we're pretty close to the flight path, we're right on it. And of course, as it is with the HSI and VOR navigations, even in GPS mode, we are going to adjust for the wind. We'll fly the heading for a while and then we'll adjust for the wind. So let's press on the wind and that, the wind, the current uh, wind outside pops up. So as you can see, we have our wind coming in from our right a little bit and it not, it's at night not. So, the cool thing about having the wind outside in front of us is that we can immediately put in a little bit of a wind correction. Okay, so let's zoom in on our, on our uh, MFD and you can see we're flying to our point Driffy. Let's take out some of the heading 190 should work pretty fine. So look what's going to happen when the GPS changes to our next flight leg. So the GPS changed to our next flight path and look at this, look at the needle. It automatically moved to our new flight path of 232. So all you really have to do for a G1000 airplane is put in your flight plan, put the airplane in the GPS mode and let the G1000 glass cockpit do all your work for you. As a matter of fact, you can put it on the autopilot, you can press the nav button and you can let the uh, autopilot fly to your whole flight. So as you can tell, this uh, GPS navigation is a piece of cake in the uh, G1000. I really wanted you guys to learn this the proper way. If you learn the easy stuff first, then you go back to the hard stuff, you won't learn as good. So what you want to do, you always want to learn the hard part first, the VORs and HSIs, where you actually have to put, uh, put in those uh, headings in yourself, and then switch to a glass cockpit where GPS navigation is a piece of cake. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. This was the last GPS navigation tutorial I'm going to do uh, for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed them. I've had fun making them, especially uh, especially the HSI and the VOR. I just love those uh, old school type instruments. The G1000 is a piece of cake. So, Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Monday warrior, me, me, strive. Today's Tom Sawyer, me.